Oh, hey, what's up? It's Mr. Wynn, and welcome to your first lesson in chemistry. We are going to learn something called basic convergence today. It's one of the most fundamental skills in chemistry, and it's a skill that we're going to use from now all the way until June. Once we get a higher level in chemistry, you're going to have to convert between really unfamiliar, strange-looking units. So I'll start this lesson off with really basic math, really basic conversions. Have your notes out and let's get right into it. Problem number one, convert 84 eggs to dozen. The answers are all provided on my notes as a number in the parentheses. In this case, the answer is seven. And then many of you will point out, well, Mr. Wynn, this is quite easy. Isn't it just 84 divided by 12? That gives you seven. Yeah, you're right. But I want you to get into the habit of showing your work and writing down all the units in such a way that they cross cancel. Because in second semester, you're going to run into problems where there's these strange units and you can't do this in your head. You can't do it on the calculator. So you want to get into the habit now so that it helps you later down the road. And I'll show that in the next clip. This is how you should do every single problem. So start by writing down what you're given. You know that you have 84 eggs, and then you go time sign, draw a line. It's a small rhyme that we came up with to help you remember this. And then on the bottom, I'm going to write eggs, because I want that to cancel. And then on top, we'll write the word dozen, because I want to convert to dozen. And then I look at the bottom of the page, and then it tells me what the conversion factor is. It's 1 to 12. This is a one-step conversion. You can see how eggs would cancel out. So I just go 84 times 1, divide by 12, and then I get 7 dozen as the answer. Problem number 2. Convert 14 minutes to seconds. I'm going to write down what I have. 14 minutes, time sign, draw a line. If minutes is on top, minutes has to go on the bottom diagonally to it. Seconds on top. And then the conversion factor is 60 seconds for 1 minute. Everyone knows that. Make sure your units cross cancel, and then just multiply 14 by 60 to get 840 seconds. Okay, so it gets more challenging. This one is the two step or more conversions, problem number one. You're being asked to go from inches to yards. Okay, so like before, time sign draw line, inches on top, inches on bottom, foot will go on top, and then the conversion factor here is easy one foot for every 12 inches, and then make sure the inches cross cancel. And then resume your work. So now foot goes on the bottom, three feet, one yard, they cross cancel. And now it becomes 20 over 36, okay? Because you have 12 times three on the bottom, the denominator. And 20 over 36, the answer is given as 0.56 yards. Okay, so it took us two steps. You had to set up two conversion factors to get to your answer. And then of course, ask yourself, does the answer make sense? You were asked to convert 20 inches into yards and you got 0.56, which is roughly half a yard. Okay, so if I asked you to shape with your hands 20 inches, okay, well, that's about a foot and a foot is 12 inches. So 20 inches is probably like that far apart. I know it's a little hard to tell because it's not to scale on your monitor, but that's about 20 inches, okay? 20 inches, does that look about like half, half a yard? Half a yard is 18 inches, so half a yard is also like 0.5, right? 0.56 yards. So yeah, the answer makes sense, okay? And then you can move on. Let's look at the problem where it's two or more steps. This is number three, converting 33 miles to centimeters. Okay, and let's first map out a plan. Let's understand the units. Okay, miles is like a huge unit. 33 miles is roughly the distance from San Clemente to a city like Irvine. Okay, that's roughly 33 miles. And you're converting to a really small unit, like centimeters. Okay, so let's first map out a plan. We're going to go from miles to foot, probably. That seems to make sense. And then foot to inches. And then finally, inches to centimeters, okay? And the reason why you have to do this is because no one knows off the top of their head the conversion factor between miles to centimeters in one step. You can't do that. 
So basically you're going from a really big unit like miles and you're going to narrow it down to centimeters. Okay, so let's show our work. Let's start by writing down 33 miles. Okay, and we're going to convert this to foot. So I'm going to put miles on the bottom because I want it to cancel. And you'll see here. Okay, I'm going to put one mile for every 5,280 feet. And again, you can find this in the conversion factors box. Okay, miles will cancel out. Let's continue the problem. Okay, we're going to go from foot to inches. So now I want foot on the bottom so that it cancels. And then inches on top of the line. 12 inches for every one foot. That's easy. Okay, now you cancel out foot. Continue on with the problem. Okay, let's go from inches to centimeters. So I want inches on the bottom. I want centimeters on top of the line. And now I just fill in the numbers correctly. Okay, I know that one inch is roughly 2.54 centimeters. And now inches will cancel out. Okay, so now I'm going to go 33 times 5,280 times 12 times 2.54. I followed my plan. I've gone from miles to centimeters. And now the answer is the number that's given. 5,310,835 centimeters. So it took us three steps to get to this answer. And now you ask yourself, does it make sense? Okay, so you're asked to go from 33 centimeters. That's the distance again from San Clemente to Irvine. Okay, 33 miles. Okay, and now you're asked to convert to centimeters, and you get a really huge number. Okay, it's like five million something centimeters. A centimeter is like this. Okay, so if you had to stack five million of these centimeters from San Clemente to Irvine, that would seem to make sense. Okay, one of the more challenging ones. This is number eight on the two or more step conversions. How many seconds have you been alive? Okay, so I'd be willing to guess that if you're a sophomore. In my chemistry class, most of you guys are like 15 years old. Some of you guys might be 14, and a small minority might be 16. Okay, but I'm just going to use 15 years for this example. Okay, it's not a big deal. And you want to map out a plan like we did before. Okay, so you want to go from years, okay, probably to months. That's the next logical step. Months to days, days to hours, hours to minutes minutes to seconds so you're going from like really big unit like years and then you want to like narrow yourself down to like a small unit okay and that's the plan so start by writing down what you're given okay you know that you're 15 years old 15 years times sine draw line okay so years will go on the bottom so that it cancels out months will go on top everyone knows that there's 12 months in a year okay continue on with the problem time sign draw line again months will go on the bottom this time days on top make sure the units cancel out and you fill in your numbers roughly 30 days in one month okay it's not super accurate but we'll just say 30 days for one month that's fine continue on days on the bottom hours on top everyone knows 24 hours in one day okay continue on time sign draw line hours ago on the bottom this time minutes on top Okay, so 60 minutes for one hour. Continue on. Okay, now minutes will go on the bottom. And seconds, finally, will go on the top. Okay, so you see how in five steps you've gone from years, okay, over to seconds. Okay, and let's see what our answer is. So you need a calculator for this, but it would tell you that it's like a really big number. Okay, it's like 4.66 times uh, 10 to the eighth seconds and okay. it's it's in the magnitude of like 400 million seconds or something like that so it's a lot of seconds that you've been alive okay and so again you know you ask yourself does the answer make sense okay 15 years okay and 15 years 400 million something seconds yeah that that makes sense but for example if you're doing your work and like you put in the calculator and then you, you're all done converting, you get 15 years is equal to like five seconds. You've only been alive five seconds. That makes no sense at all. Okay, and you would have to start over, check your work somehow. Okay, but there is a pattern, right? So you're starting with years, okay? And then you get a month. You see how we're leapfrogging? Months to days, days to hours, 
hours to minutes and then minutes to seconds okay so it's uh you're you're slowly like leapfrogging like narrowing yourself down from like a bigger to a smaller unit some problems are the other way around it's like you have to go from like a small unit back up to like a big unit okay so as long as you just kind of follow the rhyme okay time sign draw a line and you write out your units there's no way you can mess this up all right class that uh, concludes my lesson on basic conversions Make sure you wrap up the rest of the other problems, show all work, your work has to be handwritten, and also include your ID photo and the pictures of the work you'll submit online. And one last thing, make sure you answer the reflection question, why is converting units an important life skill? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Win Chemistry.